What's the greatest gift you've ever received? Does it still have great value and give you pleasure today? In over 30 years of ministry, I've noticed that what people treasure now and regard as valuable today, they no longer regard the same way tomorrow. But what I've also discovered is that people who give joyfully, generously and with abundance, and remember abundance isn't the same in everybody's mind, and give freely are the happiest and most liberated people I've come across. There is something about giving that reaches down to the core of what life's all about, giving and receiving and loving. And people who are real, genuine givers know how to love someone. So when I think of the greatest giver of all, I think about God the Father. He is a continuous giver in our life. And the one thing he's given us above everything else is what I want to talk about today, the gift of the Father. When I think about the gift of the Father, one aspect I think about is how tiny that gift was in its original giving. And that is God's gift came as a baby, carried in the womb of the Virgin Mary, born in a stable or a shed or a cave, whatever it was that they used in those days. We need to remember that the baby lying in a feeding trough was the Son of God. This was the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, lying in the form of a baby boy. It was tiny. Another aspect of this gift is that it was heaven sent. John 6, as in other places, says Jesus was sent to earth from heaven in order to fulfill God's plan. So from verse 32 we read, Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. And from verse 38, For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Jesus didn't begin his life here on earth or in the Virgin Mary's womb. He is the Alpha and Omega. He always was and always will be, and lying in that little crib was the Son of God, a gift from heaven. Every aspect of his life, from his birth as a little baby to his death on the cross, was part of the Father's gift to us. Not only was the gift of the Father very tiny, but it was also a needed gift. God gave his Son to us because of our desperate need for rescue. Sin ruined the human race. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and placed us all under divine condemnation. Romans 5.18 Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was the justification that brings life for all men. Since we are unable to pay the price justly demanded by God for our sin, our greatest need has always been for a Savior who could pay our sin debt for us. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friend, only Jesus qualified because he is without sin. He became our Redeemer, reconciling us to God. You see, the Father sent him to meet a specific need in your life and in mine. In fact, we've all had many needs. The need of forgiveness of our sin. The need of being delivered from the sense of guilt. We have needed emotional and physical healing. And we have needed material things. 
There is not one single person on the face of this earth that does not need the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour. There are many who don't know that. And so they fill their lives with other things, other persons and other pleasures. But there is only one gift from one person who can fill the greatest need in your life. And that is the Son of God, born to us in a stable in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. The gift of the Father was also a sacrificial gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. We don't often think about the fact that God sacrificed his only Son. This decision was made in eternity past when the Father chose to sacrifice his Son. And the Son chose to sacrifice his love so that we may receive the gift of eternal life. God sent Jesus to die in our place so that we might become part of his family. The Son deliberately sacrificed his life to accomplish the Father's plan, and that was so that everyone could have a personal relationship with God. Friend, how many times have you received gifts? Perhaps at Christmas time or at a birthday or other function? And it didn't fit or it, something didn't work and so you had to return it to the shop. Jesus is the one gift you never have to worry about because there's nothing about him that's imperfect because the one who gave him is perfect. Jesus was God in human flesh, walking among humanity. His character and his will are flawless. His love is perfect. His heart is perfect. And everything he does works perfectly on our behalf. Romans 8.28 And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Because God's goals for your life and mine are to perfect us into the likeness of his Son. And so the gift of the Father is also perfect. I began this message with a question. Do you remember what it was? What is the most greatest gift you've ever received? By greatest, I mean precious. In other words, those things you esteem highly. That which you place the greatest value on. You might say to me, my husband or my wife, and that's very commendable. Or you might say, my children or grandchildren. But that's also not quite true. Because the most precious gift we can ever receive is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is esteemed by the Father who says in Isaiah 45, 23, and also in Romans 4, 11, it is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The give that is above every other possibility is God's gift to the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is the one gift with which you can have a personal, intimate relationship. There is no intimacy in all the earth, no intimacy in the entire world, no intimacy in any generation that can meet, that can measure or compare to the intimate relationship you can have with Jesus. That's why he is so precious above any and every other single gift. Now, if you have received the most precious, the most perfect gift of all, with whom have you shared it? To whom have you given it? Have you been enjoying this gift by yourself? You see, this is the one gift that we cannot possibly keep to ourselves. Jesus said, 
as my father sent me to give myself away, so I send you to give yourselves away. And in giving ourselves to him, he's able to use every single one of us to give ourselves to other people. You might be asking yourself right now, so how can I have this gift from the Father? Can I work for it? No, because then it will be a reward. The only way to receive this gift is to ask Him, confessing your sins and your unworthiness to Him, telling Him that you do believe in His death at the cross and that by faith you are accepting Him as your personal Saviour. My dear friend, I can't think of a greater gift to receive on Christmas Day than the absolute assurance that Christ is my Saviour and Lord and that all my sins are forgiven and that I have a home in heaven. God bless you. Amen.